identify that's kind of messed up there. So let's go fix that real quick on the form. Don't need a user ID in the view, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Um, we'll save that on its own. So we'll start at the top. We have our error listing here, um, some basics that I've already added from my template. You can feel free to tweak those if you want to. Um, then below that, our name field. I like to add spaces between these. Location. Location is essentially going to be just like a, uh, where you could say like Zoom or Google Chats or whatever. You could have a select field there if you want, if you want to kind of pre-designate pre what those will be. To me, it's not crucial for this guide, so feel free to extend that if you want to. Then for the payment required part, I'm going to add a checkbox before the label. And we'll say flex item center. And I believe we have the wrong class on the checkbox. So we'll say checkbox class. There we go. We can do a little space. See if that does anything. It does. Cool. Not perfect, but it works for me. And then on the price field, since it's just a price and a, like a number, we're just going to make it a shorter width by default. Nice. Okay, since we added this, um, we're on the new page now. We could go to the edit and kind of follow the same uh, format. So I'll go to edit. And we'll kind of just do the same thing. Let's go into our controller and make sure everything's good there. On the booking types controller, we've got booking types not new. Um, since this is the current user who's creating this, we can pretty much scope those down to that. So on the index, instead of just displaying them all, I'm going to just say current user booking types because the person who is signed in should be the one only seeing their own booking types, if that makes sense. You don't want to just show them everyone's so that'd be kind of an invasion of privacy. And then for the new action, we'll do a similar thing. So we'll just say current user booking types dot new. That gives us a new instance of it. And this will be used on that new form we just created. So on this instance, if we go to the new view, you'll see an instance of booking type. That's where that's being connected and use. It gives you like a blank form, but an instance of it. Edits automatically taken care of because we've got the set booking type uh, before action. And this is part of the scaffolding feature. So it just kind of handled some of this setup for us because it's so generic, so typical that that will be the case. So you can kind of assume a few things with that going on. So in this case, we'll actually do on the create method, we'll do current user dot booking types dot new here, but what I want to do is actually merge, which is a nice shorthand way of saying merge user, current user. And that's just a way to, you know, not have to write like a, a user ID in this form. You can just do it on the, the back end on the controller. On the redirections, this would normally go to the show view. I don't really want that to be the case. I just want to go back to the root path or root URL, whatever you want to do. You can ditch booking type in parentheses as well. And I think that should be good. Now it depends on what you want to do, but you could also make this all, you know, inline, single page feely with turbo. I, you know, that seems like overkill for me, but if this is your bread and butter, maybe it is something to be worth doing. I'm going to remove the JSON responses too. I don't think those are crucial. Same with the destroy. Let's just go back to the root URL. And I think we're close on the very bottom. Uh, I've got name, location, description, color, duration, payment required, price, and user ID. You don't really need user ID since we're doing it on the controller layer. Um, but besides that, I think we're set up. Go check our bookings controller now. Now you probably want to at the, at the end of the day, if you have a ton of bookings, maybe you would want a, a full page view. Um, we could just honestly get rid of that. And I'll update the controller, Erka routes, if you want to do the same. So bookings, except say index. Did that really matter? I guess it does. Okay. Let me revert that then. 
let's keep this alone for now. It's it's not really crucial. Not part of the app that I think I have that. Oh, that's why it's wrong. There. Okay, scratch that. I'm gonna redo what I just undid. Okay. So not crucial to have that. Um, same with the show. I don't think you need to see much about it. Maybe you could if you want to see all those notes and stuff. Um, so maybe I'll have notes at the bottom. Remember we added that to the model. And we have status. I'm going to just pass name here. Should get the work done for our first name, last name fields. And then we'll have email, start at, end at, and then our notes field. And then we also want a booking type ID. That's, that one's pretty crucial. So again, I'll get rid of the JSON just to make my life easier. You could go to the booking URL. We have a show view, but I'm going to just make this the root URL again. It's not really crucial. And that should be good enough for me. Right on. Okay, we will add a new uh, action here when it comes to payments. But for now, let's create, we could say our first booking type. So we could say 15 minute Zoom. Testing one, two, three. Let's just do black, say 15 with no payment required. Create booking type. It does create it. This is what it looks like on the index. Nothing fancy. Uh, we don't have a price because we didn't declare one, but it did all save. So that's good. Cool. All right. With all that said, um, I don't want to create this over and over like I do on some apps. So I'm going to go and make some seeds. And in that part, we're going to just create some dummy content so I can do a Rails DB setup command and it'll kind of just propagate the database for us. So I'll do that in the very next part.